Hey there, I'm Jody Vance. And I'm George Affleck. And this is... Unspun! George and I were thinking that maybe things would slow down this week. Hey, wait, hold on. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, look, get the red on. look, can you insert some like hearts that come out of me? <laughs> yes. I'm your work wife. Your real wife sitting right over there, <laughs> so I'm allowed. Happy Valentine's Day or yes. Galentine's Day or Hallmark Holiday if you don't like it. Because there right. are a lot of people that don't like it. I'm kind of with you on that. Love your yes. people every day. I'll be going shopping right after this for the <laughs> big box of chocolates. Chocolates or flowers, Amanda? <laughs> uh, either or. Either <laughs> or? Oh. So both. Which means both. Yes. Uh, okay. Thanks. All right. This All right. is a cornucopia. This is a this is a feast of things that we need to dig into over the next mm -hmm. twenty seven minutes and thirteen seconds, which seems to be the length of our, our podcast. magic number. Let's start with Jody Wilson Raybould because it's kind of a federal yep. politics story. Obviously, um, it just started last week when we were here. It just it had up. come up. Uh, well, this is the issue. Well, as of today, she's stepped down. She's not going to be part of the caucus or probably the cabinet or even maybe the party, uh, all because of this issue related to her office when she was the attorney general. And there's back and forth on what actually happened related to uh, SNC-Lavalin. Right. So SNC-Lavalin uh, allegedly or is an under investigation regarding um, dealings with the, the Libyan government, like mm -hmm. spending millions of dollars, giving the Libyan, the Gaddafi government, millions of dollars in order to get infrastructure contracts. Because this big Canadian company does infrastructure contracts around the globe. Like, think major railways. We talked about this last week on Unspun. Uh, uh, railways, uh, Site C, um, um, SkyTrain, Evergreen Line, they the, did that. And the, well, the Canada Line. Canada Line. The airport. And they there own it. They're actually the partner on that one. So they, they are their operators. So challenging. Must, must be noted, must be noted that it was from a specific length of time. I actually know somebody who works in the legal department at SNC-Lavalin, who will remain nameless because it's sort of... You mean sort Bob? Of, it, well, actually, it's a woman, believe <laughs> oh, okay. it or not. You mean uh, Barbara? But she's excellent and ethical, and, and I've watched her, mm -hmm. not knowing really what her company did years ago, I've watched her navigate some very turbulent waters with regard oh, yeah. to the people running that company. So for those watching right now that think SNC-Lavalin is totally corrupt, this is ridiculous, how are we even... It's like the people involved with the alleged issues, the alleged crimes, if held accountable for that, are not with the company anymore. So there's that. Well, but there's also the interesting uh, Neil McDonald, who wrote an op-ed this week, uh, for a reporter, world, uh, you know, journalist for years in countries like Libya. He talked about. Uh, that's the way it works. That's right? the way it works. That's and what he, he said. He would also be guilty of uh, yeah. bakshish, as he called it, uh, giving some money to get across the border or to get his equipment back. Uh, this obviously with SNC Lavalin potentially at the le highest level and biggest money, um, but. We have, then he talked about the Canada's Boy Scout image. It uh, doesn't actually work. They're trying to transition or tra tra to spread your Boy Scout to ways across the world doesn't always work that right. way. Right. You need to function the way the markets function wherever you might be doing right. the business. But here, going back to Jody Wilson Raybould, who held the unbelievable post of Justice Minister mm -hmm. and Attorney General of Canada, mm -hmm. a woman. First Nations woman. Mm -hmm. It was highly celebrated. And then, as you pointed out, when she was shuffled. Demoted. To she was not shuffled. Yeah, that's she a was demotion. demoted. Nobody, I don't know yeah. how you could argue it wasn't. And, uh, but they tried to did, spin it that it wasn't. Uh, yeah, and she did. She did, held a, somewhat of a brave face when she did her speech out front uh, when she got the demotion. Uh, and so something has happened. Uh, I think some What's alleged to have happened? Well, I think there's been a whole bunch of things. The prime minister keeps changing his story, which is never good. He keeps saying what this, you know, well, I didn't do this. And, and so that's never good. He said, he, I he never. seems to keep offending her more and more every time he talks, which makes yeah. her more mad. So. I'll get to that in a second, being a Jody with the Y. I'll be right back with that. But <laughs> in the moment, it was at no time did anyone in my office pressure Ms. Ray, uh, Wilson Rabel, right? But right. it was like a to very not have legally. The charges flow through. Yeah. And there was another uh, question, and the statement was the same. And there was another question. That it, th it felt very lawyered in the early statements that the prime minister made. And then it became a little more. If she had a problem, if Jody had a problem, Jody should just come and talk to me. 
And yeah, that was the first iteration. And that was kind of the message, like, she was a problem minister, nobody got along with her. She was disruptive. She was disruptive, which, believe me, having sat in caucuses, <laughs> it's not uncommon, and it's a problem. But a man When you're supposed to be work like a team. But men don't get called disruptive, uh, women not do. True. I mean, yes, it's, I know this is, that there's a whole issue of this woman thing, but, you know, I've have sat in caucuses where men and women are disruptive. But have you ever been a woman? <laughs> I have, and I can I tell you, I've, no sat, I've sat in boardrooms where all men work specifically in sports, and I will say something, and an idea, just to put out mm -hmm. on the table, not disruptor, and it'll go around the table, and somebody at the other end of the table will say exactly what I say, exactly, and every guy in the room will be like, great idea, let's mm -hmm. do that, and it's that, oh, can she not be forceful and feisty and a pistol and smart without being disruptive and have issue and I don't know her so I'm not defending her mm -hmm. I just feel like there is some gender politics going on here Could be. with Could be. sunny ways and all of that feminism and I'm a feminist because it's 2015 right but those two things to me are a little bit of a clash and yeah. I know you are one of the most um, Fair, honest, and non-gender well, judgmental. Three sisters growing you got a up. business I, full I, of women here that I, are yeah, running it. Believe me, they don't take my uh, opinion very. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, anyways, George, and whatever. Yeah. Um, but and I, I had three sisters growing up, and and we had, and they were all one year apart, pretty much, and so it was lively. Uh, and and I think my dad was a feminist. You know, he was very. Uh, he believed in strong women, and my mom was a strong woman. You and, married and, a strong woman. Uh, yeah, and so I think, but I, I understand there are for sure there's there's sexism out there, of course, and in and, politics, and misogyny, and and in politics, yeah, to a certain degree. I, I, you know, I have to say, I, you know, how do you experience it? What do you what do you perceive as as misogyny? And and right. how and obviously a woman. And a man, and a me as a as a white guy, uh, you know. You're once I, again. Well, no, it's it's. it's no, but you're I once again put in a position where you can't win because you can't have it's an opinion. Difficult for me to speak right. about these things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I'm glad you Without do. Getting and in trouble. That's one of the reasons I I warned George that I'm like I'm gonna smack down on this because mm -hmm. it it's I find it even more frustrating. Uh, in watching what we've seen happen in the in the United States, and even as we're watching well, 2020 now in Ontario, candidates, and it's happening but, but it's really feels explosive. The, the whole women, the, gender, politics, and and how I mean. Well, and the and the, uh, what, the, the Trump thing, which is the white man's being pushed aside, and that's not right. That's what he's kind of. That's his a lot of his agenda, which is yeah. not cool at all. Uh, so, but I, what's interesting to get away from that because it's again, <laughs> it's a rabbit hole. It's okay. And I've got a question that goes with it. But, go ahead. but the the what's interesting and what we're seeing in in, in BC, what, what I've experienced in politics in Vancouver with Vision was like readjust, re, re, change the story. Uh, what what Trudeau spin hasn't it. done, he hasn't spun it, he hasn't found something else bigger to change the, the, to narrative. Change the narrative. Before and I we find that interesting because he's got a bunch of people behind him that are experienced with that and they haven't been able to get off this story and change the narrative. We've got a, we've got a way of taking that into mm -hmm. a segue as, of our next topic, yep. but before we go there, you do work in communications, your other hat, mm -hmm. when you weren't full-on Vancouver City Councilor for so long. Um, if, if you were managing this crisis communication situation, would you, because what I want is I want the attorney-client privilege or whatever that removed, waived by the federal government. I would say my government. advice comes at a certain rate per hour today, so remember you're listening, send your checks to... <laughs> Curve kidding, kidding. is brought to yeah. you by Unspun Podcast. No. no, but do you, like, what's the next step? This could go on for so long unless the Prime Minister, if he has really nothing to hide, can say, you know what, you're free to speak, Miss Wilson Raybould. It's a tough one because you're not. I don't know what happened really behind the scenes. None but of us when do. you have a problematic caucus member, uh, if that was the story, then he should have been stronger and said, "You're out." And he, and he should have gone to the public potentially at that point. Said she just wasn't part of the team. She wasn't on the. And you know, with the dues, utmost respect to Miss Wilson Raybould wasn't working out for us, right. uh, and Which so I she's fired. And, and in business, you do you have it a happens. staff person who's problematic. You don't keep them around, hope they'll turn into not a problem. The shell game makes it look suspicious. Uh, it does, and it, it doesn't, doesn't help morale uh, with the teams. Right. So in a caucus, which is much like running, in some ways, like that's about the only thing that's like running a business in politics, which is your caucus, which is keeping you united, focused on you, what your what your goals are. And if anybody's not focused on those things, it's really tough to achieve those goals. So if that was what's happening, he should have made it, he should have been strong out of the gate. So. If that's not what happened, and what what's, what happened was that there was some uh, shady stuff going on with the attorney general, that's a whole other issue, and that's a big problem. Uh, in an that election he has to year, deal with. Uh, but it's not yeah in an election year. But it's not something that he can't surmount get you know get away from by changing the story and getting onto something else, which is you know uh, what he hasn't done. He keeps backpedaling and yeah. changing the story, and uh, comes it's across very 
frustrating, I'm sure, for communications people. And he comes across as frustrated as well. I watched a press conference just last evening where he l broke his sort of facade that of cool, calm, and collected, which he's very good at, mm -hmm. and, and went, would you like me to answer that in English? And it was like, Whoa! I mean, that the question Although, was, was it a in French English, reporter? I'm not but sure. But the question <laughs> was in English, and oh, okay. oftentimes uh, when yeah. they th when a French reporter says "au français" mm -hmm. and then asks the question in French, and then he and then he had to like correct it. He just seems like you said. He just seems like he's back on his back foot here and mm -hmm. needs to either. You can tell by the number of ah uh, um, yeah. ums he says. He needs thing. to open it up. Or he needs to distract, which takes us to. I, I think you'll see that next. You'll see some kind of distraction coming quickly from them. Uh, I would imagine, but we'll see what that is. Unless Jody Wilson-Raybould wants to talk, because her dad's certainly talking a lot. <laughs> we'll have more on that coming up, uh, but we've got to shift gears here, because we've got like four more talks. Such a busy time in yeah. politics. Um, how about the NDP? They mm -hmm. they found a couple of really solid distractions from the speculation tax that was going on. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, sparkly things. Which one, wh where should we start with this? Well, there's so many things going on this week. They had, this, they had the throne speech yesterday, which right. Turned well, not this this week, and it turned into a bit of a debacle. It was, like, it was a non-speech. There was, uh, there was not much in there. Even uh, Andrew Weaver was going, yeah, you know, I'll wait and see the so see the policies. They're come taking to the bots table. out of ticket buying and reducing yeah, yeah. our our how, more transparency how, in the cell bill. How? 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 Right. How? Right. How? I don't, most good. of the things they can't actually achieve because a lot of them are not related to the province. It's very similar to the kind of things Vision would do in Vancouver. And it's all the same people behind the scenes for NDP really? that are spinning these and changing the message and doing all this stuff. Right. I feel like it's, 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 they're just, and so this yesterday. You need this, to explain that. Hold on. Because uh -huh. for someone watching might not realize that there are a lot of people who were with Vision Vancouver and city politics, municipal well, politics here. the chief of staff, uh, Jeff Meggs. You know, so they, explain they, that a they, little bit, and in then Vancouver, tell. In Vancouver, they had the, they took they, had, they created an art form of 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 shifting the, the story. If yeah. it was going the wrong way for them, they would find something else that was very flashy and sparkly to, to drive the media and the public's attention over to. And over, after a couple of days, uh, it was, that story was gone. And you know, right. Trump does this uh, masterfully with yeah. Twitter. He changes the subject every single five minutes whenever. He oh, tweets. we're talking it's about like, a golf simulator in the White House now. I mean, come on. Well, yeah, I it's find crazy. that interesting because, you know, Kennedy had a pool put in for him. Right. So. Obama had the golf si simulator put oh, in, oh, actually. I didn't even know initially. that. Initially. But Trump had to upgrade it because, you know, he's better. Anyways, no, back to a golf NDP ball, distraction from the tax so to went, throne speech. Which was a mess. And then there was this whole issue of Plekis letting them, uh, who's the speaker, who's been in the news a lot, who's all about, pr you know, top, let's run this place properly. For the first time ever, he let the doors close five minutes long, say to open Five minutes longer than they usually had, and it's Let's never explain been done that. before. So when it's time yes. for a vote, yeah, the bell rings, and mm -hmm. from the time the bell—it's a lot of pomp and circumstance. Yes. This is the tradition of our parliament. Our, this is what we do at the legislature. System, yes. Yeah. So the bell rings, and when the bell rings, five minutes, the big doors swing shut, and whoever's in is in, and whoever's out is out, and doesn't vote. It's like band, right. grade twelve band. I had to say right. my teacher; he wouldn't let me in. And five we, minutes late, I, I couldn't. I couldn't play my trombone if I was five minutes late. It was terrible. I'd have to go to the cafeteria and hang out. So I was always five minutes late. So, but Daryl Plekis kept the doors Yeah, he open. left them open. And, and uh, according to Von Palmer, he's never seen that before. Uh, it goes against the procedural regulations of, of the legis legislature, which is ironic since the guy who's screaming about procedures and policies and, and how the legislatures run is the guy who let it uh, slide and uh, to the fa it, it, with a favorite to the NDP, who because the liberals were in there, they were waiting, and a bunch of NDP hadn't shown up. They didn't have enough to, to get the vote. But it wasn't yeah. a confidence vote. Mm, yeah, yes and no. There's juries out on that. But they could have, yes, it would be, but they could then do a revote five minutes later if they wanted because they had the majority. So it's a bit of a, that's a bit of a weird thing. But we're thing. all paying such close attention to what <coughs> is happening in the BC legislature right now. Even some, I've got a couple of friends who don't pay attention to politics at all who, by the way, love the podcast that we're doing. Fans, because it's like, for th in 30 minutes, I can get up to speed on municipal, like provincial, <laughs> and federal politics in Canada, <laughs> unlike watching breaking news on CNN. Some people uh, hate this podcast I, because well, I'm not. Way, uh, but they're still the, watching, get, they're uh, listening. George Affleck and his stupid views about, you know. Uh, well, my girlfriend, Sandra, who does not uh, partake in politics on a very regular basis, says has watched all, this is episode six, she's like, this is necessary news. We have cake for somebody who watches. <laughs> we'll send you cake. <laughs> Ten now. in a row. It's like. Okay, so um, let's move to because McLean K, who is our mm -hmm. editor in chief at the Orca, which by the way you can always get our podcast at theorca.ca. We try and get it out Thursday night, Friday morning ish yeah. each week. Uh, but 
uh, and I do a column called The Middle every Wednesday, but this week I'm not promoting my column as much as I'd like to promote what McLean uh, did. As he did five things you need to know about Alan Mullen, right. the special investigator, yeah. uh, Daryl Plekis' right-hand guy. Yeah, his, his soldier. Yeah, yeah and we were, we were looking at what... Uh, one of the things, which is number five, and you got to read the whole article, but he says number five is um, that um, Alan Mullen says, we haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> right? It says, you guys in the media are going to be very busy. Mullen says things are just starting to get all interesting. all going to up yeah, he, more. He talks to the police on a regular basis, pretty regular basis, and special prosecutors will have something by the spring. Mind you, the RCMP have said they have no timeline on the investigation. But he says that this is just the tip of the iceberg. And then Premier John Horgan, I believe he was on with John McComb at CKNW mm -hmm. and said, um, to my knowledge, there's no investigation of M any MLA that I'm aware of. Right. So what I don't understand about this, which I, which would be the case, I mean, generally in, in office, especially if you're the leader, unless you yourself are being investigated, you you are told in camera, which we talked about last week, is that what's happening, it happens off camera. Not, not you have a private meeting. You have a private meeting, and generally the senior staff person will present to you something that's happening that's maybe related to legal or RCMP. Yeah. And you're presented with what this is happening, if you're the party in power or, or as a, a whole. What's interesting, so maybe that's, so I assume that's not, nothing's happened. What's interesting, I, I, what we learned today about the forensic audit that is going to be done, which is... The, what By the Auditor General. Which we're hoping will yeah. uncover all the stuff that Plekis is talking about. Sh a forensic audit is only done if you are asked by the RCMP to do a forensic audit, and so forensic audit meaning it has it goes into the file where charges or an investigation is underway. And so she has said the person, um, the, the the auditor general has said that she has is beginning will be getting a forensic audit on specific things, but she hasn't said what. Uh, so if she says that, that means the RCMP have asked her to do that. We already know this in an RCMP investigation. But what this I could drag on forever. But what I think is interesting is we're, yeah. we're assuming that every all, everything in Plexus's report is going to be forensically audited and audited in a deep way, and it doesn't sound like that's the case. It yeah. sounds like she will just be and her team will be um, uh, skipping uh, the s stone doing across the, the only, surface. Uh, well, yeah, and, and that's yeah. kind of what audits are. You kind of yeah. go in you. You touch on things and you make a report saying here's where the in inconsistencies are. But if she, on specific tasks that the RCMP have asked her to do, she it sounds like that's what she's pursuing. When those become public, we don't know. I think we're going to have fodder for this podcast for a long time yeah. because every time something comes out, it is spun a little sideways. George underscore Affleck on Twitter. Great follow to keep up on underscore. such things. Underscore. Uh, I'm at Jody Vance, Jody with a Y, just like Jody Wilson Raybould, actually. Like, they, like the Prime Minister Yvonne. kept calling her just Jody. And I found I saw my name on Twitter, one after the other after the other. He had like, a lot of heat for there that. There are too. more than other more than just one Jody. Um, and of course you can uh, hit up the Jody Orca Foster. at the Orc. I love her. I do. Okay, so uh, okay, I, I have to get in here on the money laundering. Uh, yes, this is something that is making me Sam Cooper yet again, Globe. Uh, global news, sorry, Keeps global pulling news, out things. national investigative mm -hmm. journalist. Every time he lays a, a, a new exclusive down, it jars me. Like, what? Yeah. What are investigators doing? What is our government doing? I'm so frustrated. I interviewed Brad West last week when I was filling in on what? NW. I had the mayor of Port Coquitlam, mm -hmm. who people are like, why are you talking about money laundering? And he's like, because I'm mad. Yeah, and then Vancouver passed, city council passed a motion to send a strongly worded letter. <laughs> Poor, well, the I mean, premier's letterbox is getting full of strongly worded letters from the city of Vancouver. They've how would sent that quite a few. How would that go down in city council? What happened there? What, how do you well, get a strongly worded Christine letter? Christine Boyle put a motion forward saying to say they support a commission into this money laundering thing. Clearly, the the premier has said he doesn't want to do it. You'd be saying he doesn't want to do it. Nobody wants right. to do this commission because they say it has no teeth. It, it's, because it's we can spend millions and millions of dollars on doing an inquiry, a public inquiry, that app absolutely has no impact on anything like Lawyers even get, if, uh, make money that's right but about it. even if there's if wrongdoings found it has no teeth as you said it doesn't actually lead to anything but I think he's running out of uh, runway on that argument I think people are pushing the, saying you got to do this and so I, I would imagine eventually he's gonna have to come to terms with this and do it uh, otherwise it will be an election issue at this rate uh, so yeah it's it's you know this this whole uh, commission thing is one thing and then Brad West being taking the lead on this, which is interesting uh, on a front because it's a lot of it's related to China specifically um, and uh, Chinese uh, gangs. I have said that a few years ago, uh, 
not that he's saying racist things, but there was a tone. You, you had to be. You could not say the kinds of things that Brad West is saying now, a few years ago in politics. I couldn't have said those things because people would have immediately called me a racist. Uh, it was took us a long time, and a lot of it had to do with Andy Andy um, Yang and yeah. his his research that gave us the ability to talk about foreign investment, f specifically from China. Uh, but there is a lot of foreign investment from a lot of places, including Russia. Uh, some of it may be not so clean. Uh, and so we have to look at foreign investment just not from China. And we have to look at money laundering not just from China. Money laundering in the marijuana industry is a huge, massive. massive, and the Hells Angels. And money laundering is a problem. And uh, yeah. uh, It became more of a problem when the money laundering led to our real estate being used as sort of a, a shelter shell game, stock market, mm -hmm. commodity market, and it left hide your, hide people. Your money or put your money somewhere safe. Right. Yeah. And without having to really be a resident in any way, shape, or form, or pay taxes here, but you can just eat up all the real estate. And then the trickle down is nobody's got a place to live because all the money, you want it. You're going to spend as much as you can, which is something that you told me um, when we were preparing for today that I found interesting is that when, with regard to moving money, let's just say out of China, as an example mm -hmm. here, uh, we've, we're all familiar with Russian gangs and, and varying gangs, regardless of ethnicity, right now it is a big topic because the yu yuan, the, the mm -hmm. Chinese currency, the fear of it being devalued has people of wealth in China looking to put it somewhere else because in a communist country too, they can go here, I'm just gonna take your money now. Yeah, and I'm take it away. So it's like you're going to invest, but you can only invest how? I, I thought the NDP were doing that with my taxes already in, 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 in BC. We need but, a rim shot. But, <laughs> but, but it, what they did a few years ago, what happened, what I think heated up the market was one of the many, many things that heated the market up, including the, 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 the transfer of wealth from the, the baby boomers to kids. I see kids in my building who are 20 years old buying Agreed. homes outright. Agreed. Cash. Uh, from their parents, uh, I've still got a mortgage. Uh, my parents gave me two thousand bucks when they, my mom died. So there, there's your two thousand dollars. Enjoy. Yeah. Um, and then that was too much, I thought, for, from her. Um, but they, uh, several years ago, the Chinese government decided that you that the f to control the out, you know, outflow of cash from China, they said you can only own one piece of property now outside of China. So you couldn't go. I'm going to have a place in San Francisco, and I'm going to have a place in Los Angeles, one in Seattle, one in Vancouver, yeah. one in New York, and one in Toronto. So instead they went, okay, I'll buy one, but it'll be the most expensive piece so of I'm property the in the highest, million biggest dollar markets <laughs> in New York or Vancouver or London, yeah. being in, in, in Sydney for a long time. Uh, and so they that's what happened. That heated the top end of the market, which trickles down to the bottom end. You know, real estate is a commodity, and uh, supply and demand, and heat in the market, all those things combined with, with a generational change of cash, with et cetera, et cetera, and this money laundering, all these yeah. things happening at the same time. Now we're seeing it correct itself, for sure. I'm just going to say the last bit of this with regard to why specifically China is a hot topic, and why, w in speaking with, with Porco Quitlam, Mayor Brad West, um, I find his voice refreshing as, as, a, as a citizen. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't talk in political speak. He will get him, he, kind of like some of the newbies um, in the House down in the United States. There's talking. Brad just vocalizes mm -hmm. what, what he's thinking and what he, uh, his frustrations. And the connection between the money laundering and then the trickle down is the housing market, but it's the fentanyl that like people are dying mm -hmm. and the numbers, I can't even tell you, I've lost count, sadly, of people I know who have lost 20 Someone something yeah. year old, no, no. not drug addicts on the downtown east Absolutely. side, da 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 da, and not that those people are d expendable no, the at all. Of people, yeah, it's, it's but that's not, a risk, yeah. but it's people using alone in their workers, homes or whatever, and there's fentanyl workers. in it. Mm -hmm. And the fentanyl is sold and, tr and traded through here from China because mm -hmm. it's a it's a root of an of an something that you'd mix together to create it's actually legal to to imp or export from China mm -hmm. and there are there's a misuse of that that is tied into you want to sell the fentanyl and then the money from the fentanyl you need to put through the casino get it out of the casino put it into the real estate and then you know clean money let's let's Essentially, live yeah, large yeah. and the fentanyl piece for me mm -hmm. is one where it's like Zero tolerance. Like we need to stop that somehow. Someone needs to step up. Uh, yes, and stop it. <laughs> there's clearly, Even, there's no simple solution to that. No. But, uh, but I that's think it just starts with the source. It starts with the source, and, and if it goes back to money laundering and all those things, then that all needs to be investigated. So, who's in charge of that? Province, federal government, 
Certainly not the cities. Uh, they can only control so much of it. So but the tersely letter, uh, tersely I, I worded don't. letter from the city to the province, and then I mean, David Eby does s seem to be speaking to this, um, and there's frustration. A lot of talking going within on. it, but I, 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 like I still don't see anything federally or provincially that has really changed the, the turn the dial on that fentanyl issue at all. And and I think it, that's because you're right. They're all interconnected, and until we start cracking down, on it, and maybe a commission uh, is part of that process will be. Uh, to enlighten everybody on how all these things are connected. Sam Cooper's Sam doing Cooper's his best doing job really he can, job. but yeah. if we have a process where all of this is daylighted for people so that we go, holy crap, this is, uh, these things are, how, now then you could get to a solution. This commission may not be the solution, but it will certainly lead to potentially, okay, let's create policies or change the way we police or legalize drugs, whatever the issue, whatever, that, there's that lots the of different. That was the legalize everything. Well, Sam Sullivan's been yeah. talking about that forever. forever. You're so, right. What do you um, think about that? Uh, Put you on the spot. <laughs> well, I think it's a good, I mean, obviously people point to Portugal as an example yeah. of that, and I think it's worth investigating. I certainly uh, have been open to uh, the legalization of marijuana, uh, to create structure, to create uh, uh, control over it. Uh, it seems to work, but a lot of people have a problem with it, obviously. They, they want to deny that there's drugs being used, and I, I think that's... But naive. Well, yeah, remember alcohol prohibition, not in our lifetime, but yeah. that caused more damage than people, Started people that don't want, world we have now. that's right, they don't want the liquor store uh, in the grocery store, it has to be next door. It's people like are very creative when you take things away from them. Indeed. Uh, you're exceptionally creative because uh, you are sending us some pretty interesting uh, tweets at George underscore Affleck, at Jody Vance, or at Unspun, Unspun Podcast. Podcast. Best um, fun tweets that uh, George and Amanda put out there. Um, you can always read us at the Orca, or hear us at theorca.ca or download anywhere you get your podcasts, yeah, right? YouTube as well. And we're built for that 30-minute commute. And on that right. note, we got to wrap this up. Are we at 27 minutes? We don't know. We're at 20, 27 minutes exactly. All right. So let's call it a day. I'm Jody Vance. George Affleck here. Thanks.